Welcome to Inspired Edinburgh, the home of powerful conversations. I'm Elliot Reeves and my guest today is Muhammad Ali. Ali is a teenage tech sensation who started his first business at age 12. You've created your own online game, Project 2006. You started website business Flaming Sites and later set up the price comparison site We Need One, for which you were offered £5 million from US investors. However, you declined the offer with the belief that it was worth more. Wow, Ali, it's brilliant to have you here. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Elliot, for having me today. It's a pleasure to be here. It's an absolute pleasure having you. Um, you are my youngest guest to date. <laughs> so congratulations on that. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've done a bit of research on your background and I have to say I'm, I'm, kind, of, I'm kind of shocked <laughs> in a good way. Um, I think what, what you're doing is, is absolutely incredible and, and power to you. So let's, let's um, kind of rewind a bit and go back to you know, your early life, um, where you grew up, um, where you went to school and, and kind of what growing up was like for you. I think growing up was just like any other youngster, I mean, going to school every single day. I'm still, I'm still going to school. Are you still yeah. at the moment? Okay. But the thing is, with me, I wasn't always outside or anything like that. I was always inside in the room playing games, <laughs> <laughs> online games. And then I think it was online games that really got me into coding. I was always curious how on earth do people actually make these kind of objects? How do they make these crates? How, how, how do they make grass? <laughs> I thought it was like they have, to, they have to actually get textures, but it, when you when you get into coding, it becomes a lot easier because you can duplicate things and everything, layers, and all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, your parents? I mean, your parents are they software engineers? Unfortunately, <laughs> my parents. I've, I've had to start from the well fresh because my par my my dad's a taxi driver and my mum she she runs the house which is very sweet of her <laughs> so <laughs> there's no connection in software unfortunately no okay but i think it's given me confidence I, I love actually just being independent so i think them not being in software has really helped me yeah so it's a win-win situation <laughs> yeah yeah for sure for sure how did you first become interested in uh coding and in computers what, what's your earliest memory of that I think it was just when I was in nursery, right? I was always on the computer. When there was somebody else on the computer, I was always, I got angry. Like, why are they on the computer? Why am I not on the computer? So <laughs> I was always behind the screen. Um, but coding didn't come until about, when I was about six. So it was, it was all to do with gaming, really. I mean, if I wasn't in gaming, I wouldn't have been coding today. I would have, I would have been relying on education more, which is a downfall, really, for me, because I looked down out. I look down at the education system because it's just the government isn't really giving opportunities to young people nowadays. I mean, the only reason young people are in education is because they don't have any other option. Their parents have brainwashed them <laughs> to go into education in the hopes of them making uh, money. But let me just make something clear here. Uh, just for a test, I, I wasn't looking for a job or anything. I applied for 10 jobs. I, I had a CV and everything. I had my experience on, the, on there. And all the jobs were worth more than £40,000 per annum. And I got applications. Uh, I got interviews for all the jobs that I applied for, which is evident that education is useless nowadays, especially in technology. I mean, I, I'm not going to say in medicine or anything like that. Yeah. It's different. But if I can get jobs that are worth, Forty thousand pound a year. It just shows that skills are valuable. Skills wor are worth a lot. Skills are worth million <laughs> millions and millions yeah, of pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. What can I say? So, I mean, do you, do you think that without um, having attended traditional education, that you could have achieved what you've currently achieved? Yeah. Any day. <laughs> Interesting. And I think it's just the government are really giving other them opportunities. It's just. I'm so sad for the people that are getting sucked into their system. The gang, there's no way out, unfortunately, when they're in. Because when you're in, then you can't, well, you can't get out, but you'd have to try and get out. <laughs> you'd have to think of a way. It's, it's really hard. I mean, I just, I just can't think of it myself. It's a, it's a long journey. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. So, I mean, when you, when you were growing up, um, what were your sort of career aspirations? You know, what did you what did you want to do? What do you think you were going to do? 
I think that's a really, really confusing question. I mean, because do you know when I was eight, I always used to look at my teachers and them opening the doors and having that kind of leadership qualities. I used to like that. I used to always want to become wanted to become a leader from day one. I mean, I wanted to become a head teacher, <laughs> but mm-hmm. it was it wasn't gonna happen because everything changed when I was twelve. When I when I when I kind of had independence of myself, I start my company is then everything just changed and my real I've, I've always been in technology and I've always wanted to become a computer scientist which yeah that's it yeah and and do you think that is the path that you will now go on well I think because I've got the skills prove that I am kind of a computer scientist in a way but I really do want to take I want to become a philanthropist. A philanthropist. <laughs> philanthropist. Yeah, philanthropist. Yeah. I will actually want to become that with te- the use of technology. So, yeah. Interesting. Interesting. So, coding is obviously something that you're incredibly passionate about. Um, what is coding for anyone that doesn't know? The best way to describe or explain coding is to actually say it like this. You use coding every single day when you turn on the TV. When you have your remote in your hand, the red button that you press is programmed to actually turn on. If there wasn't a code inside the TV for it to turn on, then the TV wouldn't work. So that's the best way to explain coding. But what I do on a daily basis uh, is I actually write code which is used on your on your iPad, laptops, computers, everything like that. So it's all it's all writing really <laughs> in coding is writing mm-hmm. but when you have to execute the code when you click the button on your website that's the execution of a code in order for the code to actually take effect and, and how did you uh, how did you learn how to code i used um, youtube to co- really? code um, and I, I was reading books as well but i don't think good books helped me as much as youtube really because on youtube you actually have it's evident that people are actually doing it and then they're showing it to you. But with books, you're just reading up about it. And then that's what the education system is doing again. They're just making our young youngsters, or I'm young myself, but they're just making them read off books, but they're not actually doing anything. They're not developing the work ethic to gain the kind of experience that they need to get a job. When they graduate, they don't really have access to that kind of to any jobs they just don't I mean the government aren't doing much to actually educate them on a work ethic I mm-hmm. think that should be done more so how how do you think that the how do you think the education system should be I think the education sy- system should be more broad to actually develop a work ethic in school so when when you when you, when when a, when our lessons over instead of just doing some questions you should develop some questions on how how can you actually get this into the work this workplace how what was what, what you're actually going to expect how you're actually going to tackle issues in work and if you can do that in work i think it's going to be a lot more easy for them to understand when they're getting a job a commercial corporate corporate job yeah yeah and, and what in what involvement with education do you think the government should have I've actually set up a meeting with the Minister for Digital to actually discuss these kind of things. I, 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 ho- I really hope that he will listen to actually change this system because it's not going to change with my words, obviously, but I need support. <laughs> but what I want to actually do is, what my prospect with this is, I actually want to bring some kind of... No, I don't want to bring technology into it because not everybody's interested in technology. I mean, some people might be interested in something else. To actually get this kind of work ethic system built we need people to actually we need a we need to taste we need a taste session so what we could actually do is a lesson a whole one hour lesson just educating the children on on the workplace just without any um knowledge or anything like that just educate them a day of the workplace or even sending the children to a workplace that could be a better option mm-hmm. and things like that okay Okay. How many jobs have you had? 
um, myself, I've, well, I've been doing freelance for the past few years, so there's a lot of freelance projects that I've been doing. Um, and there's We Need One, there's the Project on Six, there's Flame Insights, there's also, I, I, didn't, I didn't launch this, but I developed it, it was called World Currency Gold Rates, mm -hmm. and um, that was all to do with currency trading and everything like that. I developed the back end and everything. So, and then I've been speaking as well at events, I've um, uh, recently I was talking at Millennial 2020 in London, where there was Facebook because uh, Facebook was present. But I was talking with um, the CTO of Moonpig.com, and um, I, I'm, I'm a CTO myself, so I love data. And we were talking; it was a really in-depth conversation about data and how data is being a big threat to the young, especially the young generation nowadays, because things like Snapchat, mm -hmm. things like Instagram, and Young people don't know what when they're sharing content. They don't know if somebody was to screenshot that chat where it could go. <laughs> we don't even know if Snapchat is actually um, saving that data. We don't. We don't know. I mean, you might be just posting a temporary story thingy, but you, how do we know if they're not saving that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you active on social media yourself? I am. I'm. I'm very active, but I've, I always keep. I always. I'm careful when I'm online. I, I I disable the location feature on my phone. I, I tend not to use that much because like you can the, the I mean we were having a conversation at York the uh, one week ago with digi leaders digi leaders about security and we were talking if somebody's location is getting tracked, we don't know if that location it could be tracked back to Russia or another country I mean we don't mm. even know where that data is going so data is a threat in my opinion yeah yeah but I love data in a way because it enables my comp the company that I'm, I can't really I'm a hypocrite for saying this <laughs> <laughs> I love data because it enables us to improve our services for technology is very important so I have to be honest there I'm not a hypocrite or anything but I love data mm -hmm. but I don't like the threats that young people are facing with data Mm. and how they should handle it. it's very hard for you I mean what young people are educated in more is just going to school and coming home <laughs> <laughs> and then doing that homework and then go back they're not actually developing any skills which they should be doing it's very important it's a very it's a very important thing yeah yeah it's I mean it's really it's it's just really interesting to hear your opinions on it because you're at school just now yeah i am you know yeah. so yeah. it's not like you left school no, 40 no. years ago and yet you're not convinced that school's doing a great job you're in school um but you know in terms of the the uk landscape mm -hmm. and different schools do you think it's isolated um you know to to certain locations that schooling isn't as good or do you think it's a widespread issue i think it's really a widespread well, it's, it's a widespread issue. I think I, my, personally, I like one-to-one -one type of education. I don't like 30 to one or <laughs> one to 26. I love it when it's one-to-one -one where I can, because I've, I've actually mentored uh, some people in, do you know what I was talking about, Oregon. I've um, taught, he's only like, he's 21, but I was teaching him some kind of code and he's really finding effective one-to-one. -one. And he wasn't even in tech. And now he's making his own websites and everything like that. I, yeah, yeah. I wasn't, I wasn't charging anybody, anybody for that. I was just checking how do people actually cope with. If I was just to teach them one to one, I'm only seventeen, and I was, if I was to teach other people, how would they like, how would they feel? So it's really working. I mean, one to one really does work. Yeah. And about the issue of education, I think is definitely widespread. Um, for it to change, it's going to be very, very hard. It hasn't changed for the last two hundred years never mind the next hundred year hmm. the minister the government ministers aren't doing anything effective for it to change the way that i feel like it would change to benefit the young people the way they're doing it is to make money <laughs> hmm. to save money to make money to save money to make money so it's not it's just not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in terms of coding um, if you were to give advice to somebody who was interested in getting involved in it, what, what would you say? I think the first advice is if you're not going to enjoy technology, if you don't enjoy technology, don't go into it. If your <laughs> only vision is to make money, then don't, please just don't go into it. <laughs> I mean, my 
my purpose is not to make money. My purpose is to change the world with technology. So I'm not. You, <laughs> if you're gonna go into technology to make money, please just leave. <laughs> yeah. To get into coding, though, number one, you should read up about it first. Number two, if you if you like it, then you can get into it. And there's instead of the normal education to save yourself thirty thousand pound. It's better if you actually learn it yourself and then do all like that. There's other things like treehouse.com or don't use them as well. <laughs> <Do it. laughs> I'm not advertising anything, but I don't like them. I think they're, they're just making money off you. They, whatever makes money is not going to get you anywhere. It might get you to a certain extent. It might get you a, a salary, but it's not going to get you the kind of to the position where I want you to be. Where <laughs> <laughs> I sound like a proper... But, for, in order to actually get there, in order to actually get to the 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 executive level, you mm-hmm. need to actually build things that you enjoy, that you can take credit of. I don't like working for a company where, at the end of the day, I'm not going to get any credit for it. I don't want to work for a nine to five job where I'm just not going to get any creditability for it. I mean, the minute I've coded that software in, I'm not. It's going to be bye bye to me. I'm good, good, good evening to the. Good morning to the code. So I I really like to I really like to be I really I really like to take pride in my work. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. I I'd really like to hear about um we need one mm-hmm. and and really how it started and what I suppose the kind of journey with that has been for you. Um, we need one wasn't my idea. It was it was from a, a Yorkshire entrepreneur. Chris and he he's obviously he's four times my age <laughs> and he had the he had the idea from I think it was 2009 2009 that's when it was founded um we need one is an online platform basically which um it it saves consumers money but the other way around around so you create a need for let's just say water <laughs> or a smartphone you put the need in online it's all online now there's nothing which is not online and then when you create the need the keywords that you set on your need is it, it basically matches it with keywords that somebody's that somebody which is selling the product or service so it connects them both together and then you save money by choosing the lowest quote but this time it's not the quotes are prefixed where whereas on like insurance mark insurance sites such as go compare confuse.com they're all prefixed but with ours it's all aggravated it's all always changing it's it's never the same so you're saving more money okay mm-hmm. so it, how how would it compare to something like um i don't know ebay but, well ebay is a marketplace actually that's a very interesting point because for this government thingy that i've been on about i'm not meant to actually tell it but i actually want to tell the idea in a way because it's already in development and there's a prototype <laughs> Um, I'm actually launching this marketplace after we need one where to in order where it's it's more more of a community spirit marketplace instead of our government taking the tax well they are going to get the tax but it's not going to be a tax of widen scheme <laughs> <laughs> when we make profit we're going to donate 10% to back into our community so that marketplace is in development and when it launches the money that we make we're gonna donate ten percent of it to back into the community, where the community really needs that money. Mm-hmm. And I hope to actually replace the system that the government already have in place. But I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so in terms of um, we need one. I mean, you turned down an offer for five million pounds. Mm-hmm. Shall I? <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, I imagine that when, off- when offered that, most people would accept it. So wh- what was the rationale for, for declining it? I, everybody's asked me that question. Why on earth did you reject it? And <laughs> yeah, obviously you're wondering, yeah, why on earth has he rejected it? Luckily, I think your heart should drop a bit now because it is being sold. And in the next few weeks, the company will be announcing. I can't unfortunately release it right now, but uh-huh. in the next few weeks it'll be. Okay. Released on the press and everything. Else. Okay, but but I mean, in, in terms of the actual sum of money, yeah, it's more than why. Five. Would, <laughs> yes, but but when you were when you were offered five million pounds originally, yeah, why would you not accept? It? Because 
there was a lot of scope. I mean, because we were already talking, and then I know where the discussions are going to lead to. So it was very, it was the most intelligent option to actually reject the offer, because I knew what was going to happen in the next few months' time. Our our division, and it basically is where I wanted it, and it's a lot more than five million. I tell you that now. <laughs> <laughs> what was your vision? What was my vision? Yeah. Well, my vision was to actually run it. When I first, I wasn't. Oh, when I first started, I didn't imagine for this comp for we need one to actually get get onto this stage. So I wanted okay. to just run it and then put my ideas into it, put, develop it, get Chris's ideas into it. So it's all it's it's like if you're turning right, this project has gone left. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a bit so like that. <laughs> Okay, in terms of, uh, I mean, like technology. Technology is changing the world. Yeah. How do you think it's going to change in the next twenty years? Now, let's just bring data back into this because yeah. data is definitely going to change technology. I mean, the need for data is changing every second. Um, the in the next ten years, there'll be more developers like me. There'll be more and more and more because it's, it is being. A, I actually want to give a huge thanks to the government for bringing technology in, into the education system, which is the only good thing that they've done in my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> <laughs> But I think in the next twenty years, we'll see more and more startups. We'll see more and more tech startups. We'll see more and more getting invested into, and then there'll be more and more ways of. Income. There'll be more jobs in obviously in technology. There already is in Manchester alone. There's so many. There's thousands. Mm -hmm. But in the next twenty years, the need for data is going to change. It's just it's going to skyrocket up. The data at the moment isn't as needed as much. The 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 data market is worth more than fifty billion, wasn't it? More more. Uh, it's worth billions. Hmm. But in the next twenty years, it'll be worth trillions. So yeah. and then the world's gonna probably run off data. Especially data, which with we need one. I, I we we run an intention economy, which basically predicts data. Uh, we, but in the future, data like that is going to be very very valuable. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How, how do you think technology is going to disrupt industries? Oh, well, let's just start with driverless drivingless cars, for example. I mean, have you seen that Mercedes truck? I'm not no. <laughs> so things like that. I mean, like just yeah. drivingless cars are going to change technology. I mean, the way we're seeing now, we will be seeing like this in the next 20 years. <laughs> There'll be probably heat, not just heated up chairs, but chairs that can actually talk to you. Just smart, little smart things chairs. like smart chairs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And then these glass of water. There's not going to be glass of water. There's going to be waters that actually tell you what's the temperature of the water. Things like that. And how we travel. I mean, from Well, I I came from Leeds today. A to B is not going to be B A to B like the way that we see it today. It's going to be a lot different. There's going to be different. The net, I mean, obviously, network rail is going to change. The tracks are going to change. Everything is going to change. I mean, it's a big. I think we should be proud of where we're heading. What are the potential downsides, though? Definitely security. Security. Every time I work, in, I've worked in technology. Security has been a big issue. Data breaches. Um, companies like Uber giving away your location and without your permission, even though we've already accepted the permission, but they haven't made it clear. Things like that. Yahoo breaches. Talk, talk being hacked. So mm -hmm. there's always going to be them issues. And whenever I talk to somebody about this, which is technological, and I say it's your code quality that's making it like this, and then they say, oh, it's not always code quality. But it is code quality. I mean, because. Without your code being very neat and very up to date, you're just going to harm your company. Uh, it's all about your code quality. If your code quality isn't efficient for today's needs, then you're gonna get hacked. And no matter how many certificates you add or how much your, how much, how much secure it is, but if your code quality isn't right in the beginning, you're gonna have big, big threats in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What do you see yourself doing in the next five years? Uh, actually, because the government isn't listening to us that much. Well, they're partially listening, but they're not listening as much as I wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> I sound like a mean. Okay, but 
I really want to actually get the homeless people off the streets with using technology. I think wow. technology, because you were saying, what's going to happen in the next 20 years? I hope that I can get the homeless people off the streets using technology. I'm not going to even give any money, but I will be giving money but through my own technological knowledge. So it's all going to be through the marketplace that I was talking about and other things such as going out there using technology to actually get my message out there, really. I mean, when I've sold this company, I actually want to, uh, with the interviews that I get interviewed, I really want to donate money. Well, I really want to give back to the community that have helped me get where I am today. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm all, all about giving. I'm not just about taking things or anything like that. I, I, my, my, my purpose is not to make money, like I said. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How can technology change homelessness? That's a really good question. Def the, the, re the way that technology will change homelessness, the way I'm thinking is just giving them a smartphone and showing them the world, how the world is working. Because some people in their head, homeless people, they don't know where they are. They don't know the value that they have in life. I mean, they, they are the best people in the world. The I don't really, when I'm in, on the streets, I don't, I don't always give them money, but I always smile at them because they're more, worth more than what they are. So mm -hmm. with the smartphone, everything will, ch I mean, the smartphone in general will change. But I want to introduce something in the smartphone itself, which will help homeless people. It's to do with data, but it's not to do with data. <laughs> right, okay, wow. Yeah, I think it's very, it's very important to actually look look at them because nobody really looks at them the way that they should get looked at people just think that oh they were depressed and then they got out it's so hard to actually get them back into the house but with the smartphone everything can change yeah wow. <laughs> jeez in what ways do you think you will change as a person as you grow older i think because i'm just 17 at the moment I, I always, whenever I work with, I always work with like people of 30, 40, 50, more than that. But whenever I'm 17, I, I like to act like a 40, 50 year old. <laughs> because I think it's helped me a lot with, with like talk, just having a conversation. I mean, when I'm with my friends, which are 16, 17, I don't obviously talk like this. <laughs> I talk like a normal teenager, but, <laughs> but when, when, but, I, as in terms of just me changing the next five to ten years, I really want to. I'm not. I'm not going to be that type of person that's posting like the Kardashians or anything. Like yeah. But I really want to um, help the community. I just love Britain, and I, I really want to. I really want to change the things that aren't right, that the government aren't doing right. That trees are made right. Mm. So things like that. Mm -hmm. What would you like to achieve in your in your life? There's a lot of things I really, really want to achieve. I want to, I really want to talk at many, many events. Well, I'm aiming to do more than 500, but other, I've only, I've only done a, a few, but it's still quite, it's still a A to B type thingy. I'm, I'm going to train to that last B. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a lot I want to do. I mean, I want to bring technology into everybody's house. Like I said, with homeless people, I want to bring technology there. There's a lot of things I want to do. In yeah. terms of technology, though, I just want to start up more and more and more and more and more companies. Really? <laughs> but I don't want to, this time, because I, the, the only reason that I wanted to sell this company was to have financial stability. But I don't really, I think I really want to run something for myself now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what, what will that look like? I think it's going to be a huge journey but I really want to do it and I'm keen to go there so I've, I've, I'm not really good with ideas but I just like doing things I just like developing it developing it traveling I love traveling I mean I just love traveling I love to meet new people because I'm not like I might look confident but I'm not really confident from the inside <laughs> <laughs> I have to be confident though but in business you definitely have to be confident and traveling has changed that for me a lot <laughs> I travelled to Dubai to do a speech in 2016, July, and since that day, I think I've, I've, I've had more confidence in me, like, just talking to other people, and uh, if you want to, don't travel with other people, but travel alone, I think it really helps, if you're solo travelling, you get to meet new people, but when you're with, when you're with 
your friends or with your partner, I think you're just enjoying yourself. You're not really meeting new people. Mm-hmm. But if you travel alone, I think it really helps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what is it that young people today want? Mm. I think young people today want to drink. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> I think it's important for young people to change their um, head into getting into other things that help them for the future. I, I, I mean, I don't want to sound negative or anything, but I think young people really need to change. Because for the, be- for be- for the better or the worse, they aren't really preparing for the future, but they're preparing for the past. So they can tell their friends, oh, I remember doing that when I was young. But that's not really going to get you anywhere. So I think young people really need to get on with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, what do you think are the um, sort of potential threats to young people these days? Uh, definitely data breaches. I mean, when they yeah. on when they are on Snapchat taking stories and then somebody screenshots that story, that data could go anywhere. I mean, we don't even know if, yeah, I mean, if we don't even know if the company is saving their data, mm-hmm. they might just think that, oh, it's deleted now. But it's not really, <laughs> there's a database. When I code, we always work with databases. Everything is saved. And no matter how much it's going to cost for that database, no matter when we're recording this now, we've got memory cards in. They don't really care how much they're going to pay. Their, that data is worth more than that memory card. So they'll just pay and pay and pay for that data. They want that data. Yeah. They won't tell you it, they won't, they won't even tell you it, but they will be collecting your data like a scorpion, like a scorpion that needs blood. So that's how da- companies collect data nowadays. They just get it like that. Yeah. Jeez. They snatch it off you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you touched earlier upon your purpose in life. What is your, what is your full purpose, do you think? My purpose is not, like, like I said, my purpose is not to make money or anything like that. I just want to enjoy life using technology. I think technology has really changed my life. If I wasn't in technology, I, would, I wouldn't be doing this. <laughs> and it's really fun. I wouldn't even be traveling. I mean, I wouldn't have the, obviously I wouldn't have the finance to travel or anything like that, but it's just meeting new people that really helps me. My, but my purpose in life is to end worldwide poverty. I don't think it's going to, I won't be able to end it, but I want to put it, before I die, I actually want to put my contribution towards it wow yeah <laughs> that's an incredibly uh noble and well certainly a grand vision yeah but, uh, i think it's... it's gonna take a lot of, obviously it's gonna there's i've got a lot of time time until uh, hopefully yeah yeah i <laughs> age <laughs> <laughs> it passes quickly yeah <laughs> <laughs> on that note i mean what what looking you know um this is looking a, a long way ahead, but what do you think you would like your legacy to be? How would you like to be remembered? I really want to be remembered for that guy that was always working. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't want to be known for not working. So, and I don't want to be known to be lazy, lazy or anything like that. But I want to be known to actually change something in the technology sector. So I'm working on something which will hopefully change the technology for the better. Yeah. which is something to do with the homeless people. Hopefully it works. <laughs> okay, amazing. I, I, I really look forward to, to seeing what you have yeah, uh, in thanks. store. <laughs> what are you most grateful for in life? I think I'm most grateful for the opportunities that have been given to me. So just with this We Need One, I think that's a really good opportunity, which has taught me a lot of things, met new people. But the most thing of what I'm grateful for is having a house. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah. without the house, I wouldn't have been in the position that I was today. So yeah, I'm very glad that I've got a house. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, if you could master any skill or habit, what would it be? This is a very interesting question. I think the best skill that I'd want to master is 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 technology, but it'd be it, it would be coding. I'd, if I was to master that, then everything would be helpful and everything nice and easy. But <laughs> I'm not really good with the business side of things. So if I was to master that, I would actually go into, I would be, I would, I can't really learn that off YouTube. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I would actually go back to, I would go to university to actually study that. 
like an MBA or something. Yeah. 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 So education does have its merits. <laughs> it does, but it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you speak a lot about, um, you know, business, uh, technology. You've got an incredible work ethic. Mm -hmm. What is it that really drives you? I think, it's like I said, it's not money that drives me, but mm -hmm. it's, the, it's just meeting new people that drives me. I mean, I really like to meet new people and talk to them. What What's their thoughts on things? How do we change it? How do we cooperate things? How do we cooperate? How do we coordinate? And with just meeting new people, a lot changes. I mean, the way I see the world, it just changes. I mean, I've been interviewed by more than hundreds and hundreds of, of the press and everything like that. Yeah. And everybody's questions are different. Like today, even today, questions like how was your work ethic and things like that. I yeah. really like it. I, really, I think when I go back home today, these questions will really help me for my next project yeah because it makes me think i mean like this is this this inspired edinburgh is really like what, what we're talking about now is going back into my past even yeah. though i'm 17 i think i've achieved a lot for my age you absolutely have yeah <laughs> so i think <laughs> it's nice to, to just to go back back a step and just look what you've achieved i think for to actually succeed in business especially is to look back what have you done if you're feeling depressed, especially if you have mental health or anything like that, look back and just keep going. Don't ever say, oh, why am, I, why, why am I feeling down today? Why on earth am I not getting that? Why is, why is life so hard? Just look forward, look behind first and then look forward. Yeah. And then that really will put some strength into you because if you look behind with the things that you've done, the, the amount you worked hard and then you look, look into the future, I think you're, you're doing really well. Yeah. You will do well, sorry. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I think when you're in business or when you're, um, you know, always looking ahead, always pushing yourself, you tend to forget about the things that you've actually achieved. I think it's not just the people that are doing the business, but the people that are looking at the people. So, like, <laughs> especially with my parents, <laughs> yeah. nothing's enough, so you have to keep doing things. <laughs> so it's just like that. I mean, like, other people, they don't really know how much you're working. You know, mm -hmm. they don't even know how hard you're working. You have to actually just keep going. But if somebody, if you're feeling down one day, just go back. If you want to talk to somebody about it, talk to somebody about it. But remember, this world, this humans, the human instinct is to just care about yourself in a way. I, I, it's, it might, it's a very bad outlook. But yeah. I'm always having. People are just selfish nowadays. I mean, they just care about themselves, and there's very a, a very rare amount of people that will care about you. So. My advice is to actually just look forward and just look at your end goal, long-term goal. Because if you don't look at that, then I'm sorry, you're going you're gonna to regret it. You might even have really bad depression because of that. Yeah, yeah. It, it's interesting what you can touch upon there. I mean, when I look at it, I often think of social media and technology as being something that's actually exacerbating mm -hmm. people's unhappiness yeah you know like i can see obviously you've talked about the the tremendous upsides to <clears> technology <throat> but i think there are downsides as well i think the um the reduced human interaction mm -hmm. you know face-to-face -face connection yeah. and just speaking to people because we often have our heads buried in our phones i mean do you do you think that i mean like when i was on the train today Everybody was just on their phone, so there's no, I mean, I was, I was talking to somebody, I don't even know, he was a, a complete stranger, but he asked me, where were you from and everything like that. So that hasn't, nowadays it's just, oh, how are you online? But you, mm. you don't even know, on the train, you know, you just don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> I think if you go back into the 20 years ago, mm -hmm. when there was no smartphones, I mean, I think you should know more of it. Yeah, other. yeah, I do. <laughs> I've just uh, talked to other people, I've had these kind of thoughts, but... Back in the days, people were talking a lot more. I think with the internet, people have been lazy. You, I was reading on the press the other day where teens are growing up more slower. I think that is a very, very true, um, a true re reaction to it. In, in what sense? Or? Because, because um, teens are just on their phones all the time. I mean, they're always on Snapchat. They're, they're on uh, Facebook and things like that. They're not going outside a lot. I mean, I, I didn't go outside much as well, but I think it's helped me because it's, it's got me a career <laughs> and it's got me the money. 
<laughs> to do other things now. Yeah. So there is a downfall, but there's always an upfall. In everything, especially in things that you do, there's always an upfall. No matter how bad it might be, there's going to always be an upfall. We, we spoke briefly about this um, before we, we put the cameras on. Um, how would you describe your own personal values? Well, I'll, my, my personal qualities is, <laughs> well, I, I really like to help other people. I mean, I, sometimes I do help other people and then they just throw it back in my face, but I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just help them even more. <laughs> but the, when, they, when they grow up a bit more, then they'll understand that why on earth was I giving them that advice or why, why, why was I actually talking about that kind of code or whatever you call it. If they don't understand now, it might take them a few years. They'll still remember that day that you helped them. So I just love to help other people. Another value is I love to travel. Like I said, mm -hmm. I just love meeting new people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then another value that I have deeply is is not, not it's, it's, de it's definitely the people when I was talking about the homeless people, helping the people that haven't got the house. The home, sorry. If I didn't have a home today, then I'd be homeless. And it just it's just things like that. You just want to give back to the people that really are in need of these kind of things. Mm -hmm. We are, we were just saying, yeah, we're going to go have our afternoon tea or anything. <laughs> no. We're going to have our dinner. But what are they doing? They're freezing. The cold is raining right now. We don't even know what they're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's very deep. I mean, yeah. Just thinking about it. I, yeah. I mean, I'm just talking right now, and I'm not. I don't want to be trees of me just talking <laughs> all the time. I really want to do things, but it's gonna happen with time. Yeah. 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 How do you define success? Success is not defi I think this has been said a lot of times, but I just want to say it again. <laughs> success is not defined with your bank balance. But it's defined with the things that you do and how hard you're trying to get there. Uh, it doesn't matter how much you're making, that doesn't really matter. But it's, if you're enjoying yourself and you're helping other people, you're showing what you're doing to motivate other people, I think that's more important. Mm -hmm. Success is measured in that. It's not measured or defined with how much you're worth or how much your net worth. No, that's yeah. irrelevant. Yeah. And I don't think it's even with qualifications, it's not even with qualifications. If you have a qualification and you're not even using it with anything, you're not using it for a good, you know what I mean? You're not using your qualification to do anything, mm -hmm. then what's the point of a qualification? <laughs> it's just things like that. If yeah. you have money and you're not spending on things that are useful, you're spending on booze or drinks or just gambling, what's the point of the money? So, and if you have a car and you're not using it, using the train, <laughs> why are you using the... <laughs> Yeah. So just things like that. Yeah, yeah. So success is not measured in. It's not relative. It's more. There's a lot of things success is measured in. Mm -hmm. Things are, are beyond my relief, beyond <laughs> my knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> How do you inspire yourself? I think, like I said, I always look back at where I am and how I'm gonna do it. Technology has inspired me, and it's like people like Bill Gates that are giving to the poor. I mean, Barack Obama was with their foundation that they did, giving a speech about polio and things like that. And it's just things like that, that rape, people like Bill Gates that are helping me with with my quest to end poverty and get the homeless people off the roads. And I don't think the government will do that, even though they are getting the tax to do it. They aren't, they're greedy, they're not really gonna give back to the community. Mm. So I think it's time people like was step in to actually get these homeless people off the streets. It's hard to do it, but if you if you work hard and with the things that I have in mind, <laughs> I hope to get them off the street in the next ten years. So, whose responsibility do you believe it is? I think it's definitely not not the homeless people. I mean, people will say, "Oh, why are they homeless? Because they don't have house, they don't have money, anything like that." It's not the homeless people's fault. Even though they have, they might have not worked, but we need to give them the opportunities. We need to give them that smartphone. We need to get jobs on that smartphone. I've got a really good idea to get actually get something on the smartphone in order for that to work. So we need to. It's like when you're on a train and you want to get from A to B. We need to actually get from A to B without 
affecting anything. So what the government's doing is they're not really helping them. They're not giving, even though they're giving, they might say they're giving money, they're selling it properly, but they're not actually doing it. <laughs> mm. So, can't really do much about it. Yeah. Who are the people that have had the greatest influence on you in your life? I think definitely myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> You're as much selfish as we might sound. I think I've had, I think just looking at the things that I've done and then looking at other people doing it like Bill Gates, mm -hmm. he's had a really big influence on me as well. Yeah. It's just things like that that have helped give me confidence that anything is possible. And when I was like 13, 12, I really wanted to become him. <laughs> Even, I, I, I knew it wasn't going to happen, obviously, but, but, but in 2015, when I was 15, when things like this start to happen, when I was getting success a, a bit by bit, I thought to myself, how on earth is this happening? Like, I didn't even imagine this for it to happen, but it's happening. So it's, anything is possible if you put your head into it and if you try and if, if you don't give up and if, most importantly, if you believe in yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm. What is it about Bill Gates that you admire? I think his ambition to actually get rid of polio and the, the technology. And then just yesterday he said that the way he implemented the user interface on the login screen for Windows was really hard. And just things like that taking ownership for the mistakes that he's done. People don't do that anymore, like the Uber CEO for things that he did with his app and he just left, just leaving his team like that. What are you doing? I mean, you're running a huge nation, multinational company, multi-worldwide company, um, but you're not actually taking ownership for the mistakes that you've done. I think it's important to take mistake uh, ownership for, your, for the mistakes that you've done or what you've done wrong. Because it, it it just it just makes you an honest person, and that's why I look up. To, that's why I look up to Bill Gates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? I think the best advice that I've received is not to fear, but to do. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. I just made up that yeah. one up myself, but it was something <laughs> like that. Um, but not never fear. Always do things, but never ever fear. And the next advice was just like, like, like success isn't measured with your success isn't measured with what your bank balance is yeah so that was that was the best advice that i've ever got hmm. <laughs> and i, I love yeah. to share it to other people as well whenever they say oh i'm not making money from it but i said to them if you, you're doing it you're doing it now but just look how in five years time you, you'd be worth you you'd, you'd be worth more than what you were now so just keep doing what you're doing. Even if you, the, if you try hard, you, you're obviously going to be guaranteed success. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would normally ask if you had the opportunity to speak to your 20-year-old self, what would you say? But you're not 20 yet. <laughs> so I will ask you if you had the opportunity to speak to your 10-year-old self, oh. what would you say? What would you say? I said take advantage of the cheap rail ticket. <laughs> So I go travel a bit more, <laughs> but no, I, I, I'd, I'd say well, I, at, at ten I didn't even know what I was gonna be. I, I thought I was just gonna go traditional route, get a degree and then get a job, corporate job. But things changed. <laughs> I didn't expect anything like this to happen. Like I've been talking to people like Facebook. And it's just things like that. Moonpig.com. I didn't even know the Guardian sitting by me and they were just having a discussion. Like they're fifty, they're sixty, and I'm just. 17, yeah. 16 at that time, but it's just things like that that, that I've, I feel really glad about. I mean, if I was 10 now, I'd probably be riding a bike slash playing games online. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's a lot different. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> I'm very interested to hear what you have to say in response to this question, actually, because there's a few things that I think you could... Um, if you could change anything in the world, what would it be and why? I think it'd be homelessness for one thing. If only we could get rid of homeless people. Whether that... Even if you were to increase the taxes, I think the government would just steal them. So we can't really trust... Every government in this world is corrupt, no matter how uncorrupt they might say they might be. They're always corrupt. And why? It's just, really, to be honest with you, 
the government aren't giving back. Like, they're getting so much tax, but where on earth is that tax going? Yes, it's going on roads and things like that, but not everything's going to go on roads. Like TfL, for example, the underground gets so, like, it's getting, it's getting millions of pounds every day. But does the TfL really need that much money to get just keep things running? No, no, no. That money can go into people that are homeless in London. Like, when I'm always in London, and in the night, I just see homeless people, and I really... It's, it's not it's not good it's not a good feeling mm. and what i really want to change is the use of data where companies are using data for the right reasons and i hope somebody i hope it was me i hope it's me to actually investigate where are they actually collecting our data without telling us are the government involved in this and we could potentially sue the government for this because if they are doing this and they and then they're releasing our data without our, our permission and they're making money out of it or they're using the data for other reasons that's really i just i just can't even i won't even oh, so, i yeah, don't yeah. Even want to talk about it. it's just are, are facebook horrific. not doing that facebook's on <laughs> another level i mean <laughs> facebook they've got a marketplace they're getting data from there facebook's got yeah, the facebook's but the, with facebook their data were already before you actually even open the app for the first time they made you accept the terms and conditions. But we don't even, half the time, we don't even read the terms and conditions. So, like, we yeah. just scroll down. We're lazy, you just scroll down. I mean, I do sometimes. I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but when you accept the terms and conditions, we don't even know on that terms, you might even say, you, we might even take your money <laughs> in the next 10 years. So PayPal, for example, well, why, why, why don't we read the terms and conditions is because it's, it's, it's a human instinct. I mean, we're, we're, we're lazy. We don't want to read the terms because it's too much work for us. With technology, I think if you can change that, it'll be a big, huge difference to the world. If you can, if, if you can implement terms and conditions that are more simple yeah. instead of reading text that are like, uh, like the terms and conditions that I get on my sale of my company, <laughs> things like that. I don't want it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, a sense is probably quite a lot about the world that you would change. Sorry, what was that? <laughs> no, sorry, I was saying I, I sense that there is probably a lot about the current world that you would change. Yeah. Um, what would your perfect world look like? My perfect world? I think I love renewable energy as well. Okay. <laughs> I, so I want to see the world more greener, um, especially with trains. I think if if trains can be implemented, but I think with I don't really like talking about politics much, but I, I just get carried away with it sometimes. But Brexit... I'm, I'm very interested to see how everything's going to work out. I mean, I'm I'm neutral at the moment. I'm I'm I can be Remainer. I can be pro Brexit. So I, I I'm just interested to see what's going to happen in the next ten years. I think Britain's going to really. It might not even get impacted. It might get. It might strengthen the. It might even strengthen the economy. We don't even know. And yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Ali. I've loved speaking with you. It's been a, a huge amount it's of fun. Um, I've really, really enjoyed it. I've Thank really you. enjoyed it. Um, you've got, you know, you, you have some very strong views on some certain issues, um, which I think is definitely a good thing. And if if you are looking to make significant change to things like homelessness, then I think that's absolutely amazing. So, yeah, I wish you all the best in your Thank future you ventures. Much. And uh, yeah, Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers.